Hey guys, <laughs> got a e-bike conversion here for you. Wanna go over this bike, what it is, and I'm going to probably go on another rant. If you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerdout. I build electric bikes, I convert bikes into electric bikes to be more specific. You guys are gonna hold me to specifics. If you like videos like this, check out my other videos. All right, let's get right into this one. Okay, so this one is a Surface 604 e-bike. It was an e-bike before he brought it to me. But this customer, it was a hub motor bike, and he's like, I live on a hill and I can't get home after I go on a ride because the hub motor just won't get up the hill. <laughs> if you've seen any of my videos, you've seen me go on and on and on about why I don't like hub motors. And it's exactly for that reason. Hub motors do not have power. So we're converted this one into a mid drive. Now this thing is a proper hill climbing machine. This guy's gonna be able to use this bike as it was intended. Hub motors were great 20, 30 years ago when that's all there was. And I know you guys are like, no, mid drives have been around forever. Yes, they kind of have, but they've really only become popular in the last like 10 years. You know, when EcoSpeed came out, they kind of revolutionized everything. And Bafang kind of stole their design and kind of made mid drives a viable source. Now mid drives, I'd say are awesome. They're like 95% fin figured out. So for this bike, we put a mid drive on it. Now what the mid drive does is it's able to send power to these gears. So essentially you have a nine speed cassette. No, 10 speed, this is a 10 speed. So essentially now you have a 10 speed transmission. Before it just had a hub motor on there. It was a single speed transmission. The only thing you were able to add was your leg power to these gears, which you know wasn't much. You're probably putting out maybe 300 watts. This thing is gonna put out 1500 watts to these gears. We put a brand new cassette on it. So this is a Surface 604 bike. It's a good bike to start with. It's got hydraulic disc brakes. It's got a suspension front fork. It's got a solid frame to it. It's got a, a semi-integrated battery into the frame. Front and rear lights on it. Front and rear fenders. So it was a good bike to start with. Integrated rack. I mean, this is a good bike. Unfortunately, it came with that boat anchor of a hub motor in the rear. I'm gonna go over what I did to it. Okay, obviously I added a BBS 02 motor to it. We're reusing the existing 48 volt battery, so we didn't have to add a battery. I added a gear shift sensor to it because it's a mid drive. The gear shift sensor just senses when that gear shift cable is moving and it just cuts power for a half second while it changes gears. There was a quite a bit of custom wiring to do with this because I wanted to make the lights work. I, I upgraded the headlight. It had a Kenda light to it, but I upgraded that to a June Star headlight. This one has got a focused beam. So it doesn't just like spray everywhere. So it's like dim everywhere. This one's focused so you could see where you're going. It's still a six volt headlight, but it's focused. So it, it appears to be brighter. I upgraded the tires, went with the Kenda Conniptions. They were 2.1 inch tires. Now they're 2.3 inch tires. I really like these tires. I think they're like considered like urban assault tires. I like them. I like how they're like all black and just they look cool. For the display, we went with a 500C display. I like this display. It's really small color shows all your info on it it's all in one and yeah for the wiring there was, there was quite a bit of of wiring splicing wires together getting the throttle to work we removed the old by we i mean me i can i removed the old controller now we're just using the integrated controller in the motor put a brand new cassette on no we didn't we just transferred over the new cassette we had to get the new wheel built so we removed the old wheel that had the hub in there we got a new wheel, transferred over the cassette into this. So now we don't have that boat anchor there anymore. You know, that's like a $150 upgrade somewhere around there. If you wanted to, if you're thinking about converting your hub motorbike into a mid drive and you want to get rid of that motor in there, cause it's just dead weight. It's like an extra 12 pounds of weight. Figure on spending an extra 150 to 200 bucks, depending on the quality of your wheel. But it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, let's go do a Johnny Nerd Out test. So you can see top speed was 31 miles an hour. This thing hill climbed like nothing. That was a 30, 35% grade. So this customer is gonna have no problem getting home now. Um, I wish I would have done it before of the performance of the hub motor, but if you want, check out my video, why hub motors suck. And I do a comparison of a conversion before and after. It was essentially the same bike like this. We just converted a hub motor to a mid drive. So I didn't want to like redo that video. But if you're interested in how the performance changes, 
check out that video. So yeah, I, I really, if you know somebody who's thinking about buying a hub motor bike, show them this video and be like, hey, you might want to rethink about it because you're going to save 1200 bucks down the road, converting it to a mid-drive to how it should be. You, obviously, if you guys seen my videos, you know that I'm a mid-drive purist for this reason. <laughs> Exactly. I'm like, just save money. Do the conversion right the first time. Don't buy a pre-made bike unless you want to get a frame exactly like this. Like this is a cool frame that you really can't get unless it's an e-bike form. But yeah, mid-drive performance cannot be beaten by a hub motor. If you're using the same wattage, if you're using 750, if you're using a street legal hub motor versus a street legal mid motor, the mid motor is going to blow it out of the water performance wise. I think you're going to be very surprised. This build took a little, took a little while to do because of all the custom wiring. I think it took about three weeks and a lot of it was waiting for parts you know ordering the wheel and everything all right hopefully you guys found this helpful ask me any questions on this if you'd like and see you later